In this video, we're going to be tying Rickard's Calabatus. I'm going to start with some tan thread on a TMCO 3761 hook. You could tie this in either a size 12 or a size 14, depending on the size of the Calabatus that you, in the lake that you're fishing. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take a mallard feather, dyed wood duck. We're going to pull all the fibers back, just exposing the tip of the feathers, and this is going to be the, the tail. I'm just going to tie that in so that it's about the length of the shank of the hook, so I just kind of roughly measure it out. Tie it in right on top of the shank. I just kind of pull the feather tight as I wrap back down to the bend. And there we have our tail. And I just spiral the thread forward. I'm going to tie in some small copper wire right along the side of the shank of the hook. All the way back to the tail. Now we're ready for the casing. And for the casing, I'm going to take a nice generous clump of that uh, mallard wood duck feather again. I'd say probably three to four times the amount as we used for the tail. We're just going to take that mallard and we're going to tie it in so that it lays on the top of the fly. It'll be kind of a casing. I'm going to trim off the tips so I can get a nice clean tie-in with that mallard feather. Then you want to make sure that you have plenty of room to pull it over the top and reach the front of the hook. And I'll just kind of clean up my underbody a little bit, get ready for my dubbing. Now the dubbing we're going to use is just some hairline Here's your dubbing. You can use a lot of different kinds of dubbing for this fly. The dubbing is more just an underbody. It doesn't play a huge role in the fly. And it's meant to be tied very sparse, so you don't want to add too much dubbing too fast. It's a very sparse dubbed fly. Just kind of gives something for the hackle and the wire to build in or to bind into. Give the fly a little bit of bugginess as well. So I'm just going to slowly build up this dubbing and work my way forward on the shank of the hook. If you like the spikiness, you can leave it in there. If you don't, you can just kind of pluck it out with your fingers. Those are just the, the guard hairs from the, the rabbit and the dubbing. I think Rickards tends to kind of leave a few of them. It adds a little bit of bugginess to his flies. You're going to take it almost all the way forward. You're going to stop just a hair short of the eye, leaving yourself a little bit of room to finish off tying the fly with the legs and the casing. And just lay a few wraps right up by the eye leaving yourself that little bit of room. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to tie in the hackle. And for that, we're going to use a whiting high and dry rooster cape and grizzly. I'm just going to measure our hackle here. You want to pick a feather that just reaches down past the point of the hook, just barely. 
You don't want it to be too wide, too webby. These are just supposed to be kind of little legs, little gills. So you slightly undersize this hackle as you would, let's say, for a dry fly. It's smaller than that. So I just strip off a few of the feathers there, just exposing the, the quill. I'm going to tie it in by that quill right up here by the eye. A few tight wraps. Now you're just going to take that feather and you're going to do one full wrap right up there by the head. Then we're going to do these nice wide spiraling wraps back. You only want to do about four or five wraps on your way back to the fly. You don't want to do too many. And we're just going to take that copper wire and we're just going to wrap through that hackle and the body. This adds a little bit of weight but also locks down the hackle that we just tied in. I kind of shake the wire, wiggle it back and forth as I wrap through that hackle and that'll help keep from trapping too many of the fibers. And we're going to take it all the way to the front where I can capture it. A couple nice tight wraps and I can spiral the wire out of there. Trim out any trapped fibers. Trim out your rooster feather here. Close as you can to get in there. I'm going to take that mallard. I'm just going to pull it over the top of the fly. And capture it. And you want to trim out the excess. And just a couple more wraps to just clean it up. Got to be real careful at this point not to overdo it with your wraps. Each wrap should be exactly where you want it. Then we can whip finish very carefully. I actually use the whip finish to kind of help clean up the wraps as well. And then just add a little bit of super glue to the, the front. You have a finished fly. Great still water fly out here in the west. Catches a lot of trout out on Spinny Reservoir and Taro Reservoir. I've caught a lot of big fish on this fly, but very, very effective. You can find all the materials to uh, tie this fly on our website, in the riffle.com. If you're watching this via YouTube, there is a uh, link below this video in the descriptions panel. There you can follow that link to our website where you can find all the materials and links to all those materials to uh, tie the fly. That is the Rickards Calabatus.